What is up, guys? Welcome back to another news update. Yu-Gi-Oh! Konami. Oh, my God. You know, I hate being negative, man. And when I first started the, the, the YouTube grind, I guess, I thought a lot of people were very pessimistic. And I thought they gave Konami a hard time, right? And that was because I was away from the game for about 15 years. No, nah, that can't be it. That's about 10, you know, around 10. 10 years. So I was not in the know, right? But continuously, Konami keeps proving the doubters, the naysayers, the Debbie Downers. You know, it's funny. I say De Debbie Downers. I'm going to do a little icebreaker here. I have a group of friends, and one of my friends keeps calling another one of my friends a Debbie Downer, and it pisses him off. So now I just keep saying Debbie Downer. It's like stuck in my head. So. Why are these Debbie Downers, like myself, I guess, I'm included in this. Why are people mad? Why are people mad today? 25th Anniversary 10 Dueling Heroes was released. What's going on here? So MSRP $21, set size 400. We're going to talk a lot about that. Celebrate 25 years of dueling with 25th Anniversary 10 Dueling Heroes featuring sought after and brand new art versions of some of the duelings, of du some of dueling's most famous cards. Awesome, actually. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Dueling twenty fifth, Dueling's twenty fifth anniversary hits its stride with this year's ten of twenty fifth anniversary ten dueling mirrors. Not the twenty fifth anniversary anymore, I think at this point. But okay, mirrored back to back, Yami Yugi and Seto Kaiba stand like giants over a series of iconic monsters from the Yu Gi Oh anime series. While they're the world's greatest duelists, Yugi and Kaiba have always been mirrors of each other. Yugi relying on the unity of his team and the other uh kaiba with the power uh pride or whatever i i, I kind of skipped some stuff there <laughs> and if you guys don't know that is basically alluding to something here and i i took this off twitter because i i am pretty sure cosmo greninja awesome name actually that's pretty badass uh i'm pretty sure he, yeah he didn't create this it was respect Yu Gi Oh. never heard of him go make sure you guys follow it though because this is a very good comprehensive list of two sets that came out in um in the ocg i made some openings of this set in particular uh unity pride no unity my bad quarter century side unity which you guys should check out on the channel and then there's also quarter century side pride there's two different sets and i think the set size of each was around 200 i think is there does he have it anywhere on here ultra rares 80 super rares 119 but does that i mean uh, we'll go with around 200 that sounds about right and in it you every basically almost every single card had a potential of being an, an ultimate rare an ocg ultimate rare which is a really cool variant and also a quarter century rare now this product is going to be i, I should say these two products because it, it was two different products are going to be merged into this year's tins that's what it's alluding to first of all um second of all which people will complain on the internet uh yes another yugi and kaiba centric tin or just dm in general centered tin i understand the complaints i think konami it's a very stupid thing for konami to keep harping on just dm when like people are hungry like dude i am hungry for a legitimate like a good effort, good faith attempt at a GX anniversary set. Like, dude, I would buy so much of that product, but they just aren't. Like, we got the what was the set name? Battles of Legend uh, Chapter One, which was kind of like an a, a nod to the GX guys, and no, not really, because I mean, it, it kind of sucked, right? Like, there were no quarter century rares. Uh, there were, it was mixed with other crap that GX guys like myself didn't want. It's it's a bad faith attempt, and also it wasn't called GX or anything. It was literally called Battles of Legend Chapter One, right? So, anyways, as always, each tin contains three mega packs, each with multiple rarities guaranteed. This year's tin does away with some of the lower rarity slots to give everyone more of the higher rarity people are looking for including quarter century secret rares Ooh, that's actually kind of nice but okay so that, that that's kind of misleading because they aren't doing away with comments i got excited there for a second I, I was like wait hang on am i gonna be defending konami in this video but 
they still got the commons. But don't get too excited, guys. There are quarter century rares, but I guess that's one quarter century rare per pack. One one prismatic secret rare per pack. And then three ultra rares. Oh, dude. I, I see what they did. They got rid of the supers and the rares. They didn't get rid of any of the commons. Wait, what? Dude, Konami, man. That, that is pretty fucking ballsy. Uh, this year's best of 10 picks pull together popular and sought after cards from the dozen of recent booster packs, including Power of the Elements. They're double dipping here. Power of the, Power of the Elements, they fucked up last year, including some of the cards. And now they're, you know, kind of rectifying that mistake. But I'm sorry, man. You had your chance. You cannot double dip. You cannot do that. The the tins are supposed to be for that year. And I don't even like that product model, by the way. I think we should go back into the model where it was one promo or multiple promos. Who the hell cares? I really don't care about the promos. But what I, what I want is like a, a reprint tin basically what we used to have back in the day where each tin had packs that were reprints of the sets that were recently released that should be happening i don't like this whole mega pack crap i know i might be in the minority here but we're gonna get we're gonna kind of delve a little bit deeper into that but nah stop doing that Kanabi. uh photon hypernova yeah yeah duelist nexus age of overlord which is i guess cool uh, maze of memories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. By the way, power in, them including power of the elements. Now, now that I'm really thinking about it, I guess we can check TCG player in a little bit. Power of the elements is incredibly cheap right now. I think a box is like forty bucks, and like there's not much that's really expensive from power of the elements besides my boy elemental hero shining neos. I think that might be like one of the most expensive cards in is like 10 bucks. So it's not even that expensive of a set right now because they hit it with a bunch of ban a ban list, right? Because it was primarily tier elements. Them putting it in here is really, it's more odd the more you think about it. Anyway, so amazing defenders, wild survivors and more, plus brand new art versions of Red Eyes, Dark Magician Girl, Harvey's Feather Duster, Red Geki with 400 cards in the set. This tin doesn't just have something for everyone. It's got a whole lot of something. So what they're alluding to here is that, yeah, in, in the Japanese, the side unity and side pride had a an alternate art, red eyes, blue eyes. They also had a new, uh, this is Harpy's Feather Duster. This is limiter removal. And then they also had a new Dark Magician Girl and a Dark Magician, which I don't think the Dark Magician was in the pack. Now that I think of it, so maybe the red eyes is not going to be in the pack as well, but the blue eyes will be in pride. I haven't opened up any pride or seen any videos of that, though. And then there's also a right geki, which is not listed here. So, yes, uh, they are importing those cards in, boys, which is good. The, the Dark Magician Girl is going to be definitely sought after, so... I mean, some good, I guess. Meanwhile, the 50 quarter century secret rare cards in the set are, are a trip down memory lane. Uh, showcasing iconic monsters and imagery from decades. In addition, the 16 cards shown on the side of the tins and more about those later. They're, so they're going to kind of do the same thing as last year where they tease the quarter century rares in the uh, the tin themselves. But again, they're rectifying their mistake. I, and I criticize the hell out of the last year's tins as well. They picked probably the worst promos. And again, TCG player, you can kind of see that I'm correct. There's some expensive ones for sure. Dark Magician, Stardust Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, Cyber Dragon, and I think there was one more. Neos is creeping up in value, but maybe maybe one more. I, I don't know. But the rest are flops, and now they're rectifying that mistake. Weird choice to include a fucking Exodia head last year, and now they're like, oh, scrambling, like, oh, no one's buying our crap-ass set. Let's release version 2, and then people are not going to buy it again because we'll, we'll get to, but... The reasons why but oh boy all right so what are where do we left leave off here in addition to the 16 cards shown on the sides blah 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 there were there were just too many famous monsters to pass up so we added 34 more cards in the quarter century secret rare pool and you'll get three in every 10 so um the so there's gonna be 50 quarter century rares i'm assuming but wait hang on they say 50 plus 34 so is that 84 um, or is that 
50, and then there's tw uh, how many? Hang on, now we can do this math here. Yeah, okay, so it's 16 cards shown in the... So it's 16 plus 34 is equal to 50. Got it. Okay, 50 quarter century rares, and there's going to be 12 tins per, per case, right? And then you get three quarter century rares per box. So that's three times 12 which I'm horrible in math, right? 30 something, 36. And of course you're going to get repeats. You're not going to get like, come on, you're going to get magically one of every uh, quarter century rare. You're going to be buying a lot of product or they, at least they want you to buy a lot of product um, to try to collect them all or whatever. Pokemon. Anyway. So yeah, what do I, my honest thoughts about, I mean, first of all, I think the tins have sucked for the longest time. And people, I'm not in the camp where people say, it's the promos. It's not the promos. It's not, I don't think it's ever been the promos. I think some YouTuber told you that because the promos are missing, that the tins suck. No, I, I think the, the real reason is the set size is too big. Every single set that has a huge set size flops in the market. Like we've just seen it. Every you can look at every single recent tin and it's flopped in the market. You know what? We got fucking data, bro. Let's go. All right. So 2022 tin of uh whatever. Twin of magical dinkery dues. Best selling uh it's 127 dollars for the 22 2022 tin which by the way i think this is this is really undervalued but it's it, like it, it should have it, i think the msrp is 180 it should be more than 180 like two years later right it's not it's at 127 dollars now let's take a look at 2021 because that that one flopped like mega hard holy shit $79. Oh man, almost half. Actually, more than half of the MSRP. That is fucking insane. I, I didn't think it was going to be that cheap, to be honest. All right, so Dueling Heroes. Let's see what last year's tin is. Wait, what? No, that's that's not correct. 59. Okay, 104. TCG Player it has been like uh, crapping out. For some reason, they are listing uh, the lowest as. Uh, incorrect, and then they also kind of ne never mind. I might make a video about this because TCG players just been crapping out. But one hundred and forty four dollars, that's insane. I mean, again, this this is supposed to be an anniversary set, right? And it's supposed to have hype behind it. And if for if for good or worse, or um, you might agree or might disagree, it does have some hype behind it. But if you look at previous sets that were like anniversary type sets like uh dual power i think it was it like jumped in price quite a bit actually you know what let's look at that and i think it, it that might be the set name dual power that sounds familiar at least i think this is the first that i got when i first came back into the game this this is for a lack of a better word a collector type set that is kind of also like a an anniversary type set like it includes a lot of anime or what's it called um protagonist cards right and it reprinted a whole bunch of them and also imported a whole bunch of them so let's see uh actually you know what let's go high to low because i don't think 68 dollars holy shit. and this is one box dude i think this retails for 30 dollars a box so this almost doubled and yeah it has been a while as well but i I kind of expect it to, yeah, drop the drop in price now because a lot of the cards in here are kind of irrelevant. So it was ninety four dollars at a point. Holy shit, bro! Oh man, and that, and we got this crap anyway. So what else is bad about this, right? Or I guess I left off at set size. Yeah, four hundred, four hundred for a. Oh, okay, you know what? We're going back to TCG player, man. Oh boy. All right. So chapter one, Battle of Legends. Chapter one. What are people buying or paying for this? $75. That that you hate to see MSR below MSRP. Like this, people were hyped for the set, man. And you ruin the hype by including so many damn cards. Like you don't need to reprint everything. People want here. Here's the thing. When I open up a, a set, a mega pack set, there's so much bulk, man. And I, this is why uh, one of the big reasons why I say buy singles do not buy product. Let me, the YouTuber, waste my damn money 
so I can then offer you singles and then you we both I get I don't make my money back most of the time but at least you don't lose your money right so and also I guess I can entertain you or some shit I don't know but yeah it's sets like that that really make me uh not advocate for buying seal product and just say buy the damn singles because you have you have no idea, no idea if you guys have not opened up a case or even bro go buy like six tins and see how much bulk how much crap how much garbage you actually have afterwards first of all you got to throw away those those tins because the chances are you're not going to be reusing those tins when you have other tins already like there's better sorting uh mechanics more better sorting material out there right then you got to throw out the singles if you don't have a room for them for uh, the commons at the very least and then you got to throw all, all the other packaging and stuff like that there's so much crap when you open up a tin in general anyways going back to this 400 size 400 set size that is i think this is the death of of the of not Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe i don't know of the tins because set sizes like this if they just keep increasing the set size man it's just let, let me ask you this have you ever felt excited after the fact when you open up a product that has like 300 uh cards in it like have you actually ever felt satisfied if you go to, and not when you buy like a lot like when youtubers open up stuff we tend to open a lot more than we should be opening right but as a consumer as a as a person who isn't making content and you go to the store and you buy a tin or five tins whatever whatever the uh whatever i said six tins do you feel satisfied when you open up those tins like chances are you don't unless you pull something great but it, the more they increase the set size the less chance you get to pull something great and they keep throwing crap on there that you don't want and mixing up categories of product so they entice you or they think they're in trying uh, they at least think that people are enticed by it and then you get a sets like this that it's just a mis mismatch right what a better a better alternative to this konami would have been release your crappy tins and have the fucking meta players have at it you know cool whatever you throw them give them some promos who the fuck cares then give us the nostalgia guys two products that were literally in the ocg and just rename them if you really need to i guess and that's it you get two other products you get twice as much exposure actually i guess three times because you also have the tins and everyone would be happy and, and then you also give your consumers choice right because hey let's say i'm a hero guy am i gonna go and they go with this product structure right where they get the 2024 tins for the for the meta slaves out there then they get the pride and the side unity for us normies and i'm a i'm a i'm a hero player right so i go and i'm like hey i, need, I want some cool ass product where that has a shitload of heroes i'm gonna go with side unity there we go i know what i want now what's gonna happen is oh i'm a hero dude and i want hero dude ass cards what am i gonna do oh am i gonna gamble and, and possibly pull maybe pull a hero in a 400 cards from a 400 card set Nah, man, I'm just going to buy the singles. I ain't going to buy your shitty-ass project product. Come on, Konami. What are you doing? Wake up. Come on, man. Ugh, they ruined this set. <laughs> or I guess they ruined all these three sets, technically. Anyways, let me know what you your opinions are, man. I, I hate I hate this negativity, but it just it don't make sense. Like I feel like they purposely try to fuck things up. Maybe it's like a, a way of getting more publicity, right? Like I'm talking about it and no no publicity is bad publicity kind of thing. But I don't know. I, if they are, that's like some 40 chess kind of shit, which if they are, congrats, I guess. But the sales can't be that good when we see in TCG Player that your latest sets are flopping. And the sets in the in the same category, in the same damn category, the tins just don't sell. And oh, there we go. Jeez, TCG player. Okay, so yeah, there's something to it, man. I don't know. 
Let me know what you guys think. I'm going on vacation. This is the last video I'm going to make. I, th I think I made some videos and I just got to edit them. Yeah. Uh, so you guys should have something to watch on the channel. Catch you guys in the next one.